we're home. We must have got off the bus already. Well, we had to, you see, because it got to the depot and the driver went home. You know, I talked through our stop. You talked through every stop. Let's face it, Mum, you talked non-stop. <laughs> How did we get home? The driver gave us a lift in his ute. I thought it was a bit breezy. Oh, gosh, Greg, will you look at the time? Why, what is the time? I don't know, Greg. That's why I asked you to look. <laughs> Mum, I don't have a watch. Oh, of course you do. What about that Cinderella watch we gave you when you were seven? Oh, Mum, I can't wear a Cinderella watch now. Why not? Because I lost it when I was eight. <laughs> Besides, it always said 12 o'clock. Did it? Why? Because Dad fixed it. <laughs> with a hammer. Uh, <laughs> Mum, why does Dad always try to fix things with a hammer? Because it's the only tool he knows how to use. <laughs> he fixed the blender with it last week. Has Bruno got it back together again yet? Mm, I think he's having a bit of trouble with it. Oh, why? He chucked it out the window. Oh, Greta, he's getting so Australian. Next thing you know, you'll be kicking the victor. <laughs> Mum, what time's Dad get home? I don't know, dear. I'm not wearing a watch. But has Bruno got a watch on? Yes, why? Well, otherwise he wouldn't know what time to come and get you, would he? And you'd be stuck here for days and days. <laughs> don't you worry. I am sure he'll get here. So you just sit down and stop panicking while I go and put on the chops. <laughs> yes, Mum. Oh, dear, what a day. Oh, she's a nice girl, Greg, but gosh, she's confusing to talk to. <sighs> yeah, I'm home. Oh, hello, dear. How was your day? Bloody shambles, of course. Someone should blow French poodles up. What's happened now? There I am, strolling down Wombat Crescent, taking her dogs for a walk. Rep Carlad and Gaya Cooper are having the time of their lives, their little chins resting on the edge of the wheelbarrow, watching the scenery go by. <laughs> Suddenly, yep, 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 this little punsy poodle jumps out of a hedge and rushes across in front of it. What'd you do? Nothing I could do. The barrow toppled over and I ended up with Gaya Cooper across my chest. Well, why didn't she move? She was asleep. <laughs> you know how stroppy she gets if you don't wake her up with a Bing Crosby record. Anyway, by the time I get Gaya Cooper back into the barrel, I look up to see the Garbos loading Repco lad onto the truck. They didn't. Too right they did. I said, hey, you, get him off that truck. He's bred for racing. <laughs> oh, yeah, they said if he's bred for racing, who's his jockey? <laughs> Smart-ass Garbos. It's the last beer they'll get from me at Christmas. You didn't give them a beer at Christmas. That's why we've got to leave the garbage outside number 15. <laughs> Someone should blow Garbos up. Where's my paper? In the lounge room. Oh. Oh, Ted Greet is in there. We've been shopping. Hey? Uh, you, you mean grocery shopping? No. Real shopping. Bank card shopping. Oh, pickle me grandmother. <laughs> Bank card shopping? But how could you? I mean, I buried... Uh, I, I mean, you lost your bank card uh, last Saturday morning at 6am before you woke up. It was just amazing, Ted. You know, I was sitting at that very chair this morning having a cup of tea with Greg. But I said to her, what do you think would happen if you helped me to move the dog kennel to one side and then if we dig down 18 inches and then we prise the lid off the tobacco tin... What do you think we'd find? Well, we did. <laughs> and what do you think we found? An old bone? No. The bank card! <laughs> <laughs> oh, who do you think put it in there? I don't know. Uh, the dogs, I suppose. Oh. <laughs> Bloody woman, she can smell a bank card for miles. <sighs> Hello, Dad. Yeah. What are you doing here? Visiting you? Well, don't. Go and visit me somewhere else. <laughs> now, give us me paper. Hey, hang on. I'm doing a crossword puzzle. It's my crossword. It's my paper. I paid for it, so I'll colour it in. Besides, it's a competition crossword, and I'm going to win that trip to that gambling pub in Tassie. All right, if you're so clever. Tell us what this one is. Um, oh, here we are. Now, it's got two letters. Two letters, right. BP. <laughs> All right. TV. No! Oh, I get it. It's a trick question. All right. V8. Well, why not, Fitz? It doesn't. Besides, you can't have numbers in a crossword puzzle. Now, listen to the clue. Right, two letters, yeah. and the clue is Prince Charles loves one. Oh, I see what you mean. Two letters, Prince Charles loves one. Yes. PK. <laughs> Prince Charles doesn't chew PK. All right, then. 
juicy fruit, but it won't fit. Oh, it's got nothing to do with chewing gum. Stop shouting, Emily. If anybody's going to shout at me in this house, it's me. Now, two letters. Prince Charles loves one. Yes. Got it. W E we. <laughs> the royal we. He may be a prince, but he's still got to go, hasn't he? <laughs> I mean, he can't send his butler out in the snow to do it for him. Oh, listen, Dad, it's obvious. Prince Charles loves one. D I die. I was going to say that first, but you got me all confused with all those questions about chewing gum. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't mention chewing gum. Well, somebody did. I heard it. And stop ripping up my paper. I'm not. I'm just tearing it out because I'm going to send it in for the competition. Listen, Miss Smarty Chookneys, it's my paper. I'm in with the competition. It's my crossword. I filled it in with my words. Your words? They're my words. I paid for your education, so I earn the words now. <laughs> One of these days, Dad... I'm going to buy a gun and make the world a better place. Oh, fair crack, girlie. He may be a wog, but you can't shoot him. <laughs> Ted! Ted, I've won! I've won! Jeez, oh, that was quick. Oh, oh, I haven't even sent it in yet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know that Vicks Vapor Up contest, Cruise of a Lifetime thing? I've won a prize. <laughs> Tickle me, Grandmother. You mean I've won a trip? Well, sort of. Well, well what did I get? A skateboard. <laughs> Hi, Mum. I'm home. Oh, Craig, I knew it was you. Didn't even have to think twice. I just knew it. Why? Because you called me Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Your father never calls me Mum. Then again, Greta does. But then again, sometimes she doesn't. In fact, most of the time she doesn't. Why not? Because she doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> Neither do you, now that you're living with that girl of the opposite sex. Oh, now, Mum. How is Wendy? Oh, Wendy's just wonderful. Oh, so you would have me believe, Craig, but is she well? Yes, Mum, she's fine. So, you're not coming back to us. You don't even miss me. Oh, Mum, miss you's not the word. I came all this way to see you. And what's more, I've brought you something. Oh, what? My washing. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Think nothing of it, Mum. Am I auntie ready? Yes, dear, it's hanging in your old room. And what about Wendy's auntie? Yes, hanging in Greta's old room. <laughs> I didn't think it proper to hang them together. <laughs> Mum, uh, we do live together. Not in this house, you don't. Uh, Craig, look, I don't want to seem like a complaining mother or anything, but, but Wendy is at the university, isn't she? Yeah. Well, do you think that you know, next year she might be able to do a degree in ironing? Oh, well, Mum, if you don't want to do it, then we'll manage somehow. It's just that we're both very busy during the day. Well, what about the nights? Even busier during the nights. <laughs> you know, uh, study and things. Well, let's leave things out of this, Craig. There's plenty of time for things when you're married. Hey? Don't you A me, Craig. You know what things I'm talking about. What? Things we don't talk about. <laughs> Look, Mum, you've done it again. You got me all confused again. <laughs> Oh, I can see that, Craig. You've got that same look on your face that the butcher had this morning when I asked him who invented chops. But, Mum... <laughs> Mum, no one invented. I mean, they... They must have started somewhere, Craig. So I said to him, I said, Samson, what came first? <laughs> the lamb or the chop? And what he say? Holy mother of God! <laughs> Why? He chopped his thumb off. <laughs> Just awful, Craig. Oh, is he all right? Of course he's all right. He's in Medibank Private and has been ever since I started going to him. Oh, uh, Mum, for the sake of Samson's remaining fingers, phone the next order through. Oh, I couldn't do that, Craig. Samson had missed me. Hmm? Not a word to your father. But Samson fancies me. Oh. <laughs> Why? What's he say? He often says, Mrs. Bulpit, whenever you're ready, there's a meat talk in my cool room just for you. I bet he says that to all the ladies. No, Craig, only me. Oh, good, Mum. I think I'll go and get my laundry. Oh, be careful, Craig. Your father's in there. Don't worry, Mum. I'll take a whip and a chair. <laughs> G'day, Dad. What do you want? Nothing. Thank God for that. 20 years of want, grab and gimme keeping a man in a poorhouse. But now, finally, when you left home, you want nothing. 
Why couldn't you have said that to me when you were two? I couldn't talk when I was two. That'd be right. Your mouth was chocking with fire X and strain prunes and all that other baby glop I had to fork out for. What'd you expect me to do? Eat the carpet? You tried to a couple of times. <laughs> and when you weren't doing that, you were wearing it out with your grotty little knees. Someone should blow babies up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See ya. I'm off to the hospital. What's wrong with you? Don't send me the bill. I'm still paying for your birth. Yeah. I'm working there in casualty. I'm an intern. <laughs> That'd be right. Real doctors have patients. You have casualties. Dad, it's very important work. Some of those people are in a lot of pain. Uh, what, before or after you've seen them? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, Dad. Bloody kids. Give them a bottle of debt. All they think they are in the world. I got it. G'day, Craig. G'day. G'day, Ted. What the hell do you want? <laughs> What's wrong with him? Oh, the usual. His keeper's late with his feeding time. <laughs> See ya. G'day, Dad. Oh, God, can't a man get any peace? Someone should blow visitors up. <laughs> I'm not going to be here long. We just stopped by to drop off these parcels that Mum left in Myers yesterday. Oh, bull, your mother doesn't leave anything at Myers. She, she cleans it out every Saturday. <laughs> Why, closed on Sundays. Yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Don't keep saying that to me. Yeah, yeah, everybody says it to me. Yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Now, it's knock it off. Yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. <laughs> Did you hear that? She said it again. Yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. <laughs> knock it off, mate. Sorry. Bloody freeloading family, freeloading around the place. Enough to drive a man to drink. Great idea. I'll have a beer. No, you won't. I'm not handing out any more free beers to every Tom, Dick and Wog. <laughs> free? What about leave the money on the fridge? That's just deposit on the bottle. What about the rest of it? Overheads. What overheads? Overhead electric lights. <laughs> Electricity doesn't grow on trees, you know. It's always take, take, take. Nobody gives me anything. Ted, Creech and I have been thinking together. Oh, God, this is going to cost me. No, no. It does seem silly to keep this skateboard here when no one uses it. So we thought it would be best if we gave it to the little boys down at St Joseph's. What? Give my beautiful Protestant skateboard to those pimply little prune priests? <laughs> Never. It's mine. I love my skateboard. Dad, you never use it. Of course I do. Bull, you wouldn't know how to. Wouldn't I? Wouldn't I? Listen, mate, when I was a boy... Oh, here we go again. Too right we go again. When I was a boy, I used to drag a horse 20 miles to school every day on a skateboard. <laughs> why? Because he was too tired from ploughing. Well, then why didn't you leave him in the paddock? What? And walk home? It was uphill. Hills were bloody steep when I was a boy. <laughs> Face facts, Ted, you're too old. You never have and never will ride a skateboard. Me too old? Listen, mate, I can give you a run for your money. Oh, come off it, Ted. Now, now, Ted, don't you go and do anything rash. You're too old to do anything rash. Listen, mate, riding a skateboard is like an elephant falling off a bicycle. You never forget it. <laughs> You know what I mean. Don't come the raw, ignorant wog with me. <laughs> you just you put your money where your mouth is. Right, I'll bet you ten bucks you can't ride that skateboard. Right, you're on. Let's go. Right. No, Ted. No, no. Please. Keep out of this, woman. I'll get your money ready. Come oh, on, yeah, 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 sure, Ted. Stop oh, saying that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Will you stop it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, Greta, I'm getting one of those feelings again. Oh, what feelings? Oh, the same feeling I had the day he said the, that the best way to light a barbecue was with a gallon of petrol. Oh, <laughs> yes, the day the hill's hoist melted. That's the one. And the same feeling I had when he said any fool can use a chainsaw. Oh, oh Mum, don't worry. There are no engines or petrol or teeth on skateboards. But he's not used to going at high speeds, Greet. I mean, that's why he always drives in second gear with the handbrake on. <laughs> Mum, don't worry I about it. it. Oh, he's doing fine. Is he? Gosh, he's going fast. Oh, uh, oh here he comes down the driveway oh, now. Gee, he's really going fast. Oh, oh, no, I can't bear it. I've got to have a look. Oh, hang on, Ted, I'm coming. Oh, thank heaven, I opened the door. He could have had a nasty accident. What happened? He got out of control. The skateboard hit the step and he took off. He did. <laughs> Ted, are you all right? Well, I think I've broken my leg. Have you? Yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. <laughs> Ten bucks. Bloody wog! Hi. 
Why'd you bloody ask? <laughs> Man's a fool. I was wondering... Oh, God, it's hard. What? I was wondering, why are you in here? Why am I in here? I'm having a baby, of course. <laughs> Where'd you escape from? What do you think this is? A starch sock? <laughs> right in my bloody leg. Ah. How'd you do it? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Did you do it skiing? No. Nah. Did you get your toe caught in a hole in the sheet? No. <laughs> Bloody dangerous holes in sheets. Especially when they're on fire. What are you talking about? I used to smoke in bed. I don't now. Why I'm... not? I haven't got a bed. <laughs> to think of it, I haven't got a house now. <laughs> Footy? Did you do a plan footy? No. I had a mate once. He broke his leg. You wouldn't believe this bloke. He was a fully qualified, A-grade, number one dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Why? He fell off a skateboard. <laughs> Good Lord, what a deal, eh? <laughs> that makes you laugh, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> Because I didn't fall off a pink skateboard in my lounge room, no, no, I, I did it the proper way. Oh, yeah? How? Oh, um, skydiving. No water in the pool, eh? <laughs> no, 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 proper skydiving, out of a plane, you know. You should have waited until it took off. It was off. 5,000 feet. Up. Yeah, up. 5,000 feet into an empty swimming pool. <laughs> That'd bring tears to the eyes. There was no swimming pool. That's even worse. <laughs> you were wearing a parachute, weren't you? Not to speak of, no. <coughs> oh. You wouldn't be a stunt man, would you? Oh, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> Jeez, that must be exciting. Not really. It's pretty boring facing death every ten minutes. You know, chucking yourself into a combine harvester. <laughs> Just cause Jack Thompson's a scaredy cat. <laughs> How'd you do your leg? What, this leg? Oh, yeah, well, uh, I, I had to jump out of a burning Cessna and me dress got caught in the propeller. <laughs> you were wearing a dress? Oh, well, yeah, Jackie Weaver didn't want to get a hairdo mucked up. <laughs> typical. Yeah, typical, yeah, just like all those actresses. Not my idea of a man. True, very true. <laughs> of course it's true, I said it. Excuse me, sir, just lie still. Oh. We'll just have a little check on progress. Uh, how am I? How are you feeling? Fine. I'll be the judge of that. <coughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, dear, not looking good. Uh, well, what is it, what is it? I'm afraid it looks like... Uh, what, what? Yes, I'm afraid it is. What? Gangrene. Tickle me grandmother. Yes, I can arrange that too. <laughs> gangrene, gangrene, doesn't that mean you've got to amp you, amp yep, you? Yep, the big chop. <laughs> Your leg's going to have to come off. Where are you going to have to cut? Oh, round about here. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to die. Don't worry, Dad. I'll look after you. Bloody kid. Don't worry, Dad. The leg's going to be fine. Well, when am I going to get out of here? Oh, a couple of days. Gee, I wish I could have seen it happen. I mean... How can anyone break their leg falling off a skateboard in their lounge room? <laughs> skateboard? <laughs> yes, a bloody skateboard. Just remember, I wasn't wearing a parachute. A skateboard? Yes, a bloody skateboard. <laughs> Not off the laughing, Mr. Smarty Longlegs. You're so bloody clever. What did you do to yourself? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, it's an amazing coincidence, you know. I mean, two stuntmen in the same hospital. Bull. Well, it was worth a try. Well, come on, what happened? 
Oh, it's this bloody woman. I mean, she keeps annoying me when I'm trying to work. What do you do? Well, I'm a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? And? Chop me bloody thumb off. What? <laughs> I chop me bloody thumb off. Who's a dickhead now? <laughs>